In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And welcome everybody. Welcome to this Mass which we celebrate on the feast of the birthday of St. John the Baptist. And today this Mass is being offered for hope for South Hall Street homeless. And we offer this Mass too for Constancio Vaz, who died recently. And we pray also for uh, Francisco Xavier Ribello, who is sick. We pray for his recovery. And we pray especially for Marlene and Horace Gomez on their 61st wedding anniversary. And we pray also for Sister Jocelyn of the Missionaries of Charity, uh, who leaves uh, on this feast day for her new mission in Armagh. So we pray for the blessing of the Lord upon her and her mission. So we celebrate today the feast of the birthday of John the Baptist. And in a few months' time, we will be celebrating the feast of the birthday of Jesus. And so it always is in the church's calendar. John is always pointing to Jesus. He is the forerunner. And the celebration of the church's liturgy always reminds us uh, of that. So we remember the joy that his birth brought to his parents, and we pray in thanksgiving for all the joy that little children uh, bring to their families, and particularly at this time. Let's call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, mercy. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who raised up St. John the Baptist, to make ready a nation fit for Christ the Lord. Give your people, we pray, the grace of spiritual joys and direct the hearts of all the faithful into the way of salvation and peace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. First reading, a reading from the prophet Jeremiah. In the days of Josiah, the word of the Lord was addressed to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you came to birth, I consecrated you. I have appointed you as prophet to the nations. I said, Ah, Lord, look, I do not know how to speak. I am a child. But the Lord replied, Do not say I am a child. Go now to those to whom I send you, and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to protect you. It is the Lord who speaks. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, There, I am putting my words into your mouth. Look, today I am setting you over nations and over kingdoms to tear up and to knock down, to destroy and to overthrow to build and to plant. The Word of the Lord. From my mother's womb, you have been my help. From my mother's womb, you have been my help. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, rescue me, free me, pay heed to me, and save me. Be a rock where I can take refuge, a mighty stronghold to save me. For you are my rock, my stronghold. Free me from the hand of the wicked. It is you, O Lord, who are my hope. My trust, O Lord, since my youth, on you I have leaned from my birth. From my mother's womb, you have been my help. From my mother's womb, you have been my help. My lips will tell of your justice, and day by day of your help. O God, you have taught me from my youth, and I proclaim your wonders still. From my mother's womb, A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. You did not see Jesus Christ, yet you love him. And still without seeing him, you are already filled with joy so glorious that it cannot be described because you believe. And you are sure of the end to which your faith looks forward. That is the salvation of your souls. It was this salvation that the prophets were looking and searching so hard for. Their prophecies were about the grace which was to come to you. The Spirit of Christ which was in them foretold the sufferings of Christ and the glories that would come after them. And they tried to find out at what time and in what circumstances all this was to be expected. It was revealed to them that the news they brought of all the things which have not been announced to you by those who preached to you by the good news through the Holy Spirit sent from heaven was for you and not for themselves. Even the angels longed to catch a glimpse of these things. The Word of the Lord. Please stand to greet the gospel. 
Alleluia, Alleluia. He came as a witness, as a witness to speak for the light, preparing for the Lord a people fit for him. Alleluia. Uh, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In the days of King Herod of Judea, there lived a priest called Zechariah, who belonged to the Abijah section of the priesthood. And he had a wife, Elizabeth by name, who was a descendant of Aaron. Both were worthy in the sight of God and scrupulously observed all the commandments and observances of the Lord. But they were childless. Elizabeth was barren, and they were both getting on in years. Now it was the turn of Zechariah's section to serve, and he was exercising his priestly office before God, when it fell to him by lot, as the ritual custom was, to enter the Lord's sanctuary and burn incense there. And at the hour of incense, the whole congregation was outside, praying. Then there appeared to him the angel of the Lord standing on the right of the altar of incense. This sight disturbed Zechariah, and he was overcome with fear. But the angel said to him, Zechariah, do not be afraid, your prayers have been heard. Your wife Elizabeth is to bear you a son and you must name him John. He will be your joy and delight, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He must drink no wine, no strong drink. Even from his mother's womb, he will be filled with the Holy Spirit, and he will bring back many of the sons of Israel to the Lord their God. With the spirit and power of Elijah, he will go before him to turn the hearts of fathers towards their children and the disobedient back to the wisdom that the virtuous have, preparing for the Lord a people fit for him. The time came for Elizabeth to have her child, and she gave birth to her son, and when her neighbours and relations heard that the Lord had shown her so great a kindness, they shared her joy. Now on the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child. They were going to call him Zechariah after his father, but his mother spoke up. No, she said, he is to be called John. They said to her, but no one in your family has that name and made signs to his father to find out what he wanted him called. The father asked for a writing tablet and wrote, His name is John. And they were all astonished. At that instant, his power of speech returned, and he spoke and praised God. All their neighbours were filled with awe, and the whole affair was talked about throughout the hill country of Judea. All those who heard of it treasured it in their hearts. What will this child turn out to be? 
they wandered. And indeed the hand of the Lord was with him. The child grew up and his spirit matured. And he lived out in the wilderness until the day he appeared openly in Israel. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today I would like to share with you a homily of St. Augustine of Hippo, which is to be found in the Office of Readings, in the Breviary, and the Prayer of the Church uh, for this feast day of St. John the Baptist. And this homily of St. Augustine is entitled, The Voice of One Crying in the Wilderness. The Church observes the birth of John as in some way sacred. And you will not find any other of the great men of old whose birth we celebrate officially. We celebrate John's as we celebrate Christ's. This point cannot be passed over in silence. And if I may not perhaps be able to explain it, in the way that such an important matter deserves, it is still worth thinking about it a little more deeply and fruitfully than usual. John is born of an old woman who is barren. Christ is born of a young woman who is a virgin. That John will be born is not believed, and his father is struck dumb. That Christ will be born is believed, and he is conceived by faith. I have proposed some matters for inquiry and listed in advance some things that need to be discussed. I have introduced these points, even if we are not up to examine all the twists and turns of such a great mystery, either for lack of capacity or for lack of time. You will be taught much better by the one who speaks in you, even when I am not here. The one about whom you think loving thoughts, the one whom you have taken into your hearts and whose temple you have become. John, it seems, has been inserted as a kind of boundary between the two testaments, the old and the new. That he is somehow or other a boundary is something that the Lord himself indicates when he says, the law and the prophets were unto John. So he represents the old and heralds the new. Because he represents the old, he is born of an elderly couple. Because he represents the new, he is, re he is revealed as a prophet in his mother's womb. You will remember that before he was born, at Mary's arrival, he leapt in his mother's womb. Already he had been marked out there, designated before he was born. It was already shown whose forerunner he would be, even before he saw him. These are divine matters and exceed the measure of human frailty. Finally, he is born, he receives a name, and his father's tongue is loosened. Zachary is struck down and loses his voice until John, 
the Lord's forerunner is born and releases his voice for him. What does Zachary's silence mean? But that prophecy was obscure. And before the proclamation of Christ, somehow concealed and shut up. It is released and opened up by his arrival. It becomes clear when the one who has been prophesied is about to come. The releasing of Zachary's voice at the birth of John has the same significance as the tearing of the veil of the temple at the crucifixion of Christ. If John were meant to proclaim himself, he would not be opening Zachary's mouth. The tongue is released because a voice is being born. For when John was already heralding the Lord, he was asked, Who are you? And he replied, I am the voice. I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. John is the voice. But the Lord in the beginning was the word. John is a voice for a time. But Christ is the eternal word from the beginning. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we've received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we've received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. We place these offerings on your altar, O Lord to celebrate with fitting honour the nativity of him who both foretold the coming of the world's saviour and pointed him out when he came, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God, it is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In his precursor, St. John the Baptist, we praise your great glory. For you consecrated him for a singular honour among those born of women. His birth brought great rejoicing. Even in the womb he leapt for joy at the coming of human salvation. He alone of all the prophets pointed out the Lamb of Redemption and to make holy the flowing waters, he baptized the very author of baptism, and was privileged to bear him supreme witness by the shedding of his blood. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty. Without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy there for these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Vincent, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. (laughs) 
Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with St. John the Baptist, with the blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Our deliverers, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And, with your spirit. and let's offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
I invite you to make your spiritual communion at home. Uh, please uh, join me in the prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul, so that I may unite myself wholly to you, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. 
having feasted at the banquet of the heavenly Lamb. We pray, O Lord, that finding joy in the nativity of St. John the Baptist, your church may know as the author of her rebirth, the Christ whose coming John foretold, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. Uh, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. A happy feast to you all. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Choose your